Hi folks and welcome to another Blooms Babble and Beyond. This is our regular chat where we uh, have the artists or many of the artists from the Blooms Art House Collective and we just chat about a topic for that particular month. And we have six of us today. Hello ladies. Good Give us morning. a wave. Hello. Hi, Those of you in the UK, this is like blankety black. <laughs> Sydney, you haven't got a clue what blankety black is, have you? Uh, yes, I do. We had oh, it here. No, blankety blank. Okay. Not well, now, but we did. Let's hope we're going to have no silly answers today. Because <laughs> what about? today's topic, well, it's one of those that this is a really broad spectrum of a subject matter. It's art and the spiritual realm, because we're all artists. And we all sort of, over the last year or two, me and Steph in particular, realized that the spiritual realm was becoming an increasingly big and wonderful part of our lives. And it was crossing over into our art, the way we do our art, the way we think about our art. But it's not just the art, it's the whole way of living. And so I thought it'd be great if we look today at how the spiritual realm in all of its different levels, some people will be into it in more depth, others um, not so much, how it affects us on a regular daily basis, which of course, whatever we do during the day, our mood, the way we feel, where we react to other people, has an impact on our art. So where are we gonna start? Well, I think we should start with um, one of the two, um, I don't wanna say experts, because that's 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 a word, one of the two more renowned um, <laughs> who use, who use um, the spiritual realm really in their art. We'll start with Cindy. Uh, Cindy, <laughs> now we we know that you are a great, you and Mac are the two amongst us that have this wonderful connection, or uh, probably longer than all of us, to the spiritual realm and how it impinges on your art and the way you feel. So give us an overview, really, because this is a subject matter that can go any way. Give us an overview of how you see the spiritual side of things affecting art in general. It doesn't just affect art, though. Like, uh, I call it um, the awakening when somebody starts to tap into their spiritual side um, because uh, in my understanding and my beliefs, once we incarnate as into a human avatar as such, as I like to call them, um, we go through what's known as the great forgetting. So we forget where we actually come from. We forget about the connection and everything. And it's not until we go through an awakening, seems like a good appropriate word for me, um, that we remember and start to remember and reconnect properly to our higher selves and the whole spiritual realm, if you like that word. Um, so you, once you go through that, it affects everything. Not, your art is just affected just as much as the rest of your life. Um, your outlook on life is very different. Um, the way you handle problems is very different. The way you just deal with everything is completely different. Um, I, With my art, though, um, I actually like to infuse a lot of the spiritual... Um, messages and so forth that come through to me into my artwork now. So I suppose that's my biggest impact on my art that um, being connected has. Um, so do you physically I, put it into your art though, or do, or is it just you feel yeah. it and it goes, or do you actually write it on, or how's it? I have actually started writing it as well, so uh -huh. that it's there for other people um rather than just the infused energy which is how i was working yeah. i've now gone that step further and i actually i can actually sh show you if you want yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely so, yeah i came from there ah. hey. so um i started when i started doing it i started doing it very subtly and um here oh, hang on let me get it into the frame there we go yeah. so, in, inside the tree here, there are actual symbols. It's really hard to see because I've made it blend right in, right? right? So my light code symbols and my light code messages are here. And if you look close enough, 
in real life much easier to see you can yeah. see them right yeah. and as you know you go along you get bolder and bolder uh -huh. i'm pretty sure it's more the longer you connect the more you connect the more often etc you get more confident so now there's no need to um oh hang on let's see oh this is hard right in front of you. yeah uh that's it. Nope. There. There. See? See all this silver? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's more down the bottom, but I can't make that part show on screen. At the <laughs> so those <laughs> individual symbols, those individual yeah. symbols, yeah. do they mean, does each symbol mean something to you? Or uh, I get it as an overall message, mm -hmm. um, not as an individual like not as a like I don't see you know this symbol to be at or anything like that. I get it as a group of symbols meaning a certain thing. So um, while you're while you're working on that piece, it comes through to you and you intuitively yeah do that. Wow yeah yeah. So often it's because I paint animals all the time. Um, uh, often it's like a uh the same sort of message I would get um, if I'm connecting to an animal spirit guide. So that those ones that I've hold up, held up were messages from tiger spirit, basically. Um, and yeah, one of them was message about, um, you know, tiger conservation and what we could do as humans to help save the tigers um, and things like that. So yeah. I so when really people awesome. buy your art, then, do you explain to them what those symbols are in there? Because you said that in the, in the earlier pieces, they weren't, they were subtle, hidden away in the background, but now they're bolder. Do you explain to people what they are? I tell them uh, in general what they are, that they're light codes um, downloaded from source. Um, I like to use the word source, not God, you know, each to a, each to their own. Mm -hmm. Um but uh, um, I explained to them that and I, uh, if there's a, a short version of the message, you know, the overall theme of the message, I'll pass that on. But unless they're overly interested and really ask, no, I'm not giving them that full message at this point in time. Um, mostly because not everybody is ready for that. Mm. Like... Um, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. people, some people are drawn to it, but yeah. just want to feel it because you do. You feel it. You don't. It's not light language. Is not a language that we speak like I'm speaking to you about, right? It's it's a language more that we feel, and that's how we know what it's saying or what's happening is mm. by the way we feel. We feel it inside. We don't. Yeah. Some people can speak it. But uh, if you listen with the human ear, you can't understand what they're saying in that way. You need to listen to it with your uh, soul rather than uh, your ears. That was my next observation, really, just going back a little bit, is that a lot of people... Hi, whether, Henry! <laughs> whether, yes, whether artists or not, will mm. people watching this will probably have not really thought about the spiritual realm, um, regardless of whether it's connected to art, a lot of people won't realize things that happen in their life are connected to their awakening and they won't realize what it, what is happening. So that, yeah. that, that was, I think what happened to me really when Steph started to get involved with channeling and that sort of thing, it sort of bled onto me and I wasn't particularly skeptical beforehand, but I didn't have not a part of um, life that I looked at, but now. You always used to use the phrase, I come to you for that Steph rather than yeah. it being yeah. your experience mm. that was your mm. phrase you always use before yes. the thing is yeah. the thing is even before even before we have any sort of awareness and awakening occur we um all are connecting in and uh using different parts through our lives anyway without realizing it's just That's that we're it. doing it basically with yeah. blinders on yeah. Um, because like any time we are daydreaming or get these amazing ideas out of nowhere or anything like that, we're actually connecting in and we just don't know that we have. Yeah. Is yeah. basically what it comes down to. 
And um, once you start to realise what that is, that's when you can really make more of it. Yeah. I want to bring Mac yeah. into it now because this you you must find this map that once people you meet realize that what they're feeling what they're um experiencing is to do with the spirit realm do you find to explain it to them you have to use a language that they will understand because a lot of people when you start talking about um what cindy was saying then they probably won't be able to grasp it how do you explain to someone in layman's terms Okay, well, there's lots of ways you can do um, do that. Well, I think we've all walked into a room and we just know there's been an argument there where it just feels off. <laughs> or you could meet someone and you go, oh, yeah, I'm not sure about that person. Mm -hmm. That's your intuition. And those are the kind of early signs that you're tuning into that person's energy. But the spiritual realm... Unless you have the gift to be able to see externally, which I have fortunate that I can, not all the time, but it's it's started, say, when with radio waves, we can't see them. But we know they were there, there because science has now proved it. Radio waves, radio waves, microwaves, um, ultraviolet light. These are things we cannot see. But also that we are in all different parts of the world. We're here now and we are connecting through an invisible force. <laughs> it's called the Internet and Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And it's those kinds of realms, those unseen realms that when you're connecting to the spirit world, that's the, that's the, the things that you, the kind of things that you connect to. And it's also to do with belief systems. Many people believe in God, Allah, Buddha, the Vedas, etc. And it's a belief in things that are other than yourself, that are very powerful, that can have effect in your life. And for me personally, when I was growing up, I didn't realize at the time that I was very sensitive and kind of turned on, switched on at the beginning. And um, so I was having these sensations, I mean, magnified sensations, and that didn't help in our human design reflector. But um, so they were overwhelming to me. So I kind of like um, mm. suppressed that side of me. Um, more so to the point that when I was doing art therapy, for example, we were doing um, experiential workshops and this was over a period of a year and a half that I would sit with say eight or nine people in the class and I would be emotional as anything and be doing lots of paintings, but I only showed one. And that one painting was the same symbol or form as somebody else's and then in the end I thought I've been doing all these paintings I'm actually going to show all of them and it turned out if there were nine people in the room I did eight paintings and each one had a symbol on it form shape the exact same as every person in the room mm -hmm. that shocked me what shocked me was there was none for me oh oh I mean, that's just one example, you mm. know, that I was connecting in, but of course I couldn't control it then. I'm much better at controlling it now. Thank mm. goodness, because it was just too overwhelming. Um, but in in my own work, I mean, I've been doing artists and someone gave me a pencil and said, draw, when I was a child. And more and more and more, um, either than drawing um what do you call it reality drawing drawing clock or drawing some flowers or trees or whatever on an animal and um, i've gradually went into abstract art but the ideas that came i would have an idea and i'd work on it or experiment with things but more and more and more I've been trusting the process that I do not know what I'm doing now. 
I've been I've been taken on this journey, which is if you don't know what you're doing and you kind of committed to it, it's kind of like scary. Um, mm -hmm. Right to the very end, and it's only to the very end that then it makes sense of what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, and that trust has really helped me to connect with spirit. Now, um, so much that you said there that, that people will will say, yes, I recognize the way that I felt then. Yeah, and I think it's the way, the way that you introduce people to this topic is so important because you just mentioned we're on the internet now. Um, 100 years ago, we would have probably all been burnt at the stake because this is witchcraft. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, so much now that we take for granted that is almost magical to what we would have thought in many years ago. And yet we're only now just tapping into the fact that the same can happen on the spiritual side. We can have connections with people in different countries just through the spiritual side. So I'm now thinking, because I've been a part of it now for the last three or four years with, with your Steph doing it and everything, is it's, it's, it's natural to me to think this way now. It's not natural to everybody, which is, but the good thing is, there's a lot more of, um, information about it going on now and people being introduced to it so hopefully in 50 100 years time it will be so hopefully it'll be so natural for everybody well, I think people openly talk about it now yes. don't they because yeah. I, I say when I very first um questioned things I, I was very very young and I, I've said to the group before my brother gave me a book about life after death because that was the only thing that he could give me which would actually help me understand something at such a young age but I, I kept saying, but how do I do this? How do I, do, what is this? How do you do this? Because I don't know, Steph, it's just a book, you know? And it's like, oh, okay. And there wasn't, you didn't have a group that you know, we did actually used to have like spiritualist church where you could go to and people would speak to, you know, dead relatives or whatever. And I used to say, but I haven't got any dead relatives <laughs> that I knew, you know, at that time. So that's pointless, but things like that. But now we have groups of all kinds. And it's like, I think Mac always says she uses, you know many many mediums modalities i think you call them that you most all the different yeah. forms and everything and that's it there's there is something that anybody will attune to and i'm very much someone who likes to have a dabble yeah a dabble with channeling i i girls i bought my first pendulum yesterday <laughs> so, um, you know, so i have a play you know but, but and i call it playing and it is playing and and you're encouraged to play with it because it's fun and it's good and if you find a connection with it brilliant and if you don't I don't see things you know oh yeah hey let's have a look at Cindy's let's have a look that's oh. a big one if you don't mind me saying <laughs> wow <laughs> my favorite pendulum oh you got many of them have you or I've got a few now but yeah. I have two favourites. This one is my all-time favourite. This one gives me the best results. This is the one that I'm connected to the best. Right. So, And that's what yeah. it's all about, is yes. that connection that you make with it. Exactly. This is my one. I got it. I got it yesterday. And I went into and it's actually got some... Yeah. Uh, what's that? It's got... Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say take the chain off. Oh, okay. And, Don't wear it. And put a cord on. Oh, okay. I've heard that. Reason before. being, Cindy, reason being? The reason being uh, you connected with the metal of the chain can have um, like a feedback interference. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so okay. You don't get the same uh, feedback uh, through the chain uh, from a cord. So, so yeah, brilliant. Yeah. But I said okay. to, um, I'd I just seen something about it and I was watching someone who said she just does a bit test for yes and no and she, it does it, you know, clockwise or anti-clockwise. So I said, I was in the shop and I thought, that's beautiful. And I was immediately just struck by that. I picked it up. Yep. So I thought, okay. well, I'll just, I'll just try it then. So I held it up and I said, okay, um, clockwise for yes. And it moved. And I went, I'm bloody having it. That's <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> that's enough for me. Excellent. <laughs> but yes, I will. I had heard that about the cord, so I will do that. Yes. Excellent. Now we've told, uh, now we've had a chat to our two, um, more ascended members of our group. Ascended. and Sammy in. Um, um, because um, being a part of a group with two people in it in particular that are very 
connected with the spiritual realm. How has that affected your view on it? And does it come into your art? We'll start with Fiona. Okay. Um, well, I think in Cindy's terms, I'm definitely a, a really heavy sleeper at the moment, uh, <laughs> waiting for my awakening. Um, <laughs> it's, it's certainly not that I'm not interested and I'm very open to all this. I find it very fascinating, interesting. Um, to be fair, I've just not had the time to delve into it very much um, recently. That hopefully will change next year. Yes. Um, <laughs> along with lots of other things next year. So, and I did have a, a session with Mac recently. Uh, well, Mac was doing some more training and mm. um, I volunteered for a session, which was absolutely fascinating. And, uh, you know, very, as I say, I'm very open to all the ideas. And, but I, I'm nowhere near like Cindy or Max sort of level or ascendance. Um, when, you, when you're doing paintings, do you ever yeah. have that intuitive feeling that um, that would look good there? Do you have any, any have, I mean, artists usually go on a bit of intuition. Do you have that at all when you're painting? Well, I, I do. And you know, as you know, a lot of my work is landscape and mm. I love trees and, and just lovely natural countryside. And I think in a way that may be a similar thing that it's feeding through mm. me but not That's what I was thinking not maybe in a conscious way and you know as I'm working yeah I might might have had as most of us probably as artists we have an idea in our head when we start a work this is how I want it to end up but sometimes the painting has different ideas which may be the painting or it may be things you know feeding through me I'm not you know, I certainly wouldn't say, no way, that can't happen. You know, it's, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm very open to the, to all of the ideas about it. And I would like to learn more. Um, but yeah, certainly I'll be part way through a painting and I'll think, you know, I thought about, but I'm going to change that. It, it is going to be better if I do it a different way. So. You don't know why you thought that. This is the thing that I'm getting at is that we mm. could be um, channeling the help from the spiritual realm to into our work without really realizing it and it's oh, only when as Cindy said you get the awakening that you realize and then you have this flood of oh my god this is this is great because I can then tap into this this and this it's probably doing a gentle approach to you I think I don't want to hmm. shock Fiona too but we'll just come in gently and move her hand to that particular oil instead of that one and and didn't know why she did that but it looks fab yeah yeah I I don't I can't deny that because I don't know no. um it could well be something like that. It's also interesting um, that Lisa, when she refers to your work, Fiona, she says that you are a magician of colour blending. And uh, oh. when we said when we're talking about the oils, because we're doing a Blooms on Tour thing where we're all dabbling with each other's and we was I was actually asking about colours and Elisa said, yes, but Fiona is just the wizard when it comes. So you must have some wow. huge instincts with just you go, they mix, boom, you know, and on which you know clearly I don't have that <laughs> uh, it, it, I, I suppose you know partly there's practice involved obviously you know when you're fiber sculpting yeah. Steph you know that you just take this and you do that and it will come out yeah. more or less you know in a certain way that you can predict um now obviously with mixing colors after a while you if you stick to a fairly regular palette of colors you get to know those colors as well but, and then sometimes it's nice to introduce a new colour. And sometimes you might think, oh, I think I'll just add a bit of this there and because it'll just lift it or something. Mm. But whether that's something coming through me, I, I'm i not aware of it. But mm. I, you know... I, you go with it anyway. Absolutely. And I mean, I will illustrate the fact that I'm open to this because when I first moved to the London area... And we had a flat in the top of a very old building. It was in the like the roof, probably where the servants lived, which was appropriate. <laughs> you know. um, and because of the sloping roofs, the sofa was partly into the room. You could walk behind it just about, you know, head on one side. But I'd be sitting there reading or working at the sink in the kitchen. And I felt somebody friendly, inquisitive 
looking over my shoulder. Oh, what are you reading? What are you doing? Oh, what are you doing vegetables at the sink? What? And it was always very friendly and inquisitive and never scary. And it was a strange place. It had a shower cubicle in a corner of the kitchen and a <laughs> toilet down on a half landing. And the wash basin was basically the sink as well. So, But if I was actually in there using the wash basin to wash myself or the sink, I never got that feeling. It was as though they, oh, well, you're doing something private. That's uh. private. And we moved from there, bought a first flat, five minutes in the car down the road. And it happened there a few times as though, well, I've come to see where you are and what you're up to. And then it stopped. It was like, well, I've come to see, but I, after a little, you know, a couple of weeks or so, it, it stopped and it oh. didn't happen again. And, you know, I didn't see anything. I didn't physically feel anything. There was no cold, icy blast of air or anything like that. But I just felt, felt it, there was a, a presence, yeah. friendly and inquiring. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I, I've got very much an open mind as to what's out there uh, I'm not religious I, um, I just feel that religion has caused so much war death hurt awful things in the world but I do believe in what a lot of religions teach as mm. in being kind to others treating people the right way living in a good way uh, rather than what they actually have, <laughs> what actually happens um, yeah. and I you know, I'm very open to the idea there's something bigger than us mm. out there. And what we don't know, or what I don't know, Cindy and Mac possibly know a bit more than I do. Um, but I don't know what's out there. I don't know what isn't out there. There could be physically something right here. But because meagre mortals that we are, humans, we can't detect maybe anything. Well, we can't detect anything more than sight, sound, you know, touch, whatever. There may be something there that we just have no way of detecting. You know, I dogs think... can tell you when. Yes, animals. You know, yeah. a lot more things than we pick up on because they sense things differently. For example, I so... think sometimes humans can limit themselves to accepting things, and that certainly yeah. was the way that I felt when I first. Um, started to to learn about the spiritual realm as I keep calling it but um, is from, from Steph once you start accepting it becomes a normal part of your life that some think that years ago you'd have been called wacky now is is quite a normal part of your life to accept and as Cindy mentioned um, she doesn't call it God she calls it source which mm. is totally um, devoid of any religious connotation um, and it really has helped me come to terms with everything that's going on around us at the moment. Sammy, we're gonna, I'm going to bring you in now because abstract artist. Um, you, I'm I, absolutely wacko. It is probably more wacko than everybody else. Um, <laughs> I know that you've got a particular structure for your abstract art. It's not just throw something at the canvas and see what happens. But how does the topic we're talking about this morning come into your art? How have you, has it changed you in the last year or two since you got together with these other wackos or, or not? <laughs> um, I mean, my, my art has changed in the fact that it's a lot more confident since being with the Blooms. My confidence has gone from like naught to, to 100. That's how I feel. But I just want to pick up on what all the other girls have already said. And the fact is that we're all artists. We're all producing um, something that we feel we just, we, we have to say. But rather than saying it in words, we're saying it with our artwork. And Fiona and her artwork is, is so moving and her poetry is so beautiful that it can't come from anywhere else but from within her, you know? And within her is something that is, I, I don't know, imagine that we've all got like a little diamond inside of us. And, and, and when we, when Fiona writes her poetry or when she creates her artwork, 
that little diamond is is like I don't know it sprinkles magic and the same with Cindy's well with all our artwork we're able to produce something that someone we don't know who that person is someone will go wow there's something about that that's for me so when Cindy was saying about um putting the writing on her artwork and sometimes she explains it sometimes she doesn't whether depending on whether the people ask someone will come along maybe not today maybe in a couple of years time buy that piece of artwork because that piece of artwork is saying something to them they don't know what it is they can't put it into a language but they're feeling it and i think that's mm. where the the spirituality of what we do comes through so we don't have to, um, I feel we don't have to be able to explain it, just feel it and let yeah. it flow through you. And I think sometimes over the years of talking and, and learning about more than just being a human, you know, learning more about spirituality, um, I find that the more um, analytical you are sometimes it's harder to open up but actually you, you don't realize you are well and truly open you're doing it you're delivering it Fiona you don't need to study for 10 15 years if 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 that's not your thing lots of people do but you know you just be open and what you're mm -hmm. producing is so beautiful and mm -hmm. so um organic in how you do it I mean especially alongside the paintings and your poetry that speaks to so many people at so many different levels that I think you just sort of say yeah this is me so like me this is me this is my artwork it is abstract some people are going to like it some people aren't but you know I just sort of think I have like like you know I have a, a process I go through in creating my artwork but I I believe I believe that if I open myself up to listening, then I can put more into my artwork. Mm. I think a lot of people sometimes close themselves off to listening, and that's not listening to other people talking particularly, it's listening to what is being said from within you. That's what I've mm -hmm. found, is listening to yourself. And I know we always talk about the, the good and bad things on your shoulder, the devil and the angel and everything. Mm. But I mean, that's all a part of, I mean, I'm new to all this. It's, 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 it's novel to me, but it's, it's so exciting. I mean, I'm a great one for analogies. And I, I've been, I do, I listen to a lot of audio books, fantasy, sci-fi audio books. And the one that I've just finished listening to uh, until the next one comes out is one of the Brandon Sanderson ones, um, the Stormlight Archive, and they talk about everybody has what they call a spren, which is a little little um, a spirit inside them. They call it a spren that helps them with to do various things. So I've taken that analogy on board. I think anything that helps you to get a handle on the spiritual side, as long mm -hmm. as it's you know useful, I think we all handle it differently, don't we? And you change. I think you also change, yeah. don't you? Through because yeah. I was when I was younger, I always used to talk to the person I thought was my guardian angel. I was actually talking to myself. I was actually talking to my higher self, but I had to perceive it at the time because I didn't realise that eighty percent of it is in us. We are it. You know, we are connected, and that and you. That's what you're channeling through and talking to. So for a while, I saw it as guardian angel, and so I could openly have a conversation. And it took a while when I thought, oh, that's actually me to sort of do that adjustment. Like, oh, you still have the same conversation. And that, as you say, when you have those sudden ideas and things and that, and it's yourself telling yourself, but it's just a different person within you connected. And, you know, you're going to say something then, Cindy. Yeah, I, I was just going to say it's, it is it is the whole thing about um, uh, talking to different people um, about the spiritual realm. It's uh i like mac um we do things like energy coaching and and healing work that sort of thing and it's different for every person that you do that work with because it all depends on where that person is at mm. so i can't go along to somebody like fiona 
and start talking about light language and light codes and everything because it's just going to go like this straight over her head and it's not going to help her. Although the codes will still help her technically, she will get more benefit from it if I start talking to her in ways that she can understand, like mm. trusting her gut feelings and um, those sort of things, right? which is her intuition, which is her higher self, which is source itself, right? Right. But if I start talking to her and say that it's source that she's listening to and everything, it can be too much and too overwhelming. So we talk about things like, you know, trusting that when she gets those gut feelings or or things like that. You, it's it's just labels that we put on it. Mm. Like it literally is just labels and everybody has their own labels for different things. So when you do the uh, the coaching work, I don't know how Matt goes about it, but I try to find out from the person what their belief systems are and everything to use the words that are comfortable for them, that are going to resonate with them. Like Steve, you said you like analogies, right? Mm. And that helps you, right? So then if I was having a session with you, I would look for appropriate analogies that are going to help you understand the concepts I'm trying to get across to you so that the work that we're doing has more effect but it is literally just labels it's it's Mm -hmm. like we're all doing it and it's just half of us are doing it um, actually it's probably more than half in the world with blinders on and are completely unaware the things that we've said over the years like um everything happens for a reason um it just felt right. it just felt right you know things like that people said oh yes that's happened for a reason you didn't sell because that and all this now I know is because the universe has some plan for us and we've just got to trust. A lot of it is well, trust. Well, Max said it with regards to her art that she had to trust her process mm. and everything. And right at the very end, she went, oh, there you go. But sure. that's the same with us in life, isn't it? That yes. with, we've done something that we thought, yes, that's it. And it didn't happen. It went wrong or it's a perception that it went wrong, but it didn't go wrong. It went right for the final thing. And that's where you and I now just say, wasn't meant to happen. There's a bigger picture we're unaware of. And when you finally get to the bigger picture, you go, oh, no, I get why that. <laughs> I'll tell you the one big feeling that I've had, the one big plus positive that I've had with all this being involved with you ladies and the spiritual realm and everything is it's so stressless the mm. stress that seems to have gone yeah. out of decisions yeah. and when things don't happen i used to get so stressed now i just think no oh, there's a pattern steph we're going to talk about you now because oh. you you fiber sculpting your animals um yeah. similar in a way to cindy's that animals are a big part of your art um so yeah. the spiritual side how do you bring that into when you're doing a piece so I definitely have two different stages of my art, one part where I actually go into the study and learning about the animals. I, I usually have an instinct as to which animal I'm going to go towards at any time. But once I've done the study, as in, right, this is exactly where the, um you know, bones are going to be. And this is the, once I actually start, I, well, I always say I start building, say, a tiger, and then I eventually build one or create one particular tiger as a personality and I start talking to them sometimes actually verbally sometimes mentally in there uh, but I'm actually they are now a particular personality that I'm building and I've always said the eyes are the thing for me and there comes a point where I go I look into their eyes and I go there you are and it's like I can see them and and that's where I feel like it's an intuition that part. And I there was a, I have struggled with my art side of things, as in I really wanted it to be realism and exactly as you see them. But I have just started now to see um, the. I mean, I love that's why I love that Cindy and seeing the colours and everything that she does because I I don't I don't have that vision, but I still have a different. Their personality speaks to me a bit more, so I'm. I'm allowing myself at the moment to just be a bit more intuitive with my pieces rather than this must look exactly like that. Look, I'm just going to go in with that flow and I'm really loving that. And um, with your colours of your pieces, you've you've gone away a little bit from trying to make this perfect from yes. what you see 
to yeah. just what you feel like your lion reflects the sunsets and the well and even the, the hair that I did recently and the thing is that fibers that I use are very open to this because you can like a palette of paint you can mix every color of fiber together and get all sorts of glow and in the hair that I did recently um as you know Steve because you've seen it in reality mm. Because as we all know, our work looks quite different in real life than it does from a photograph. And you can see all the nuances and everything when you see it. And there are turquoises and reds and all sorts because that that's how it does. I mean, there is no animal that if you see it in the wild that it, a hair doesn't look grey. You know, mm. it's reflecting from the wood or the mushrooms or the everything that's around them. And so that's why I always remember somebody who obviously wasn't open to the colour um, coming up to one show. And it was my lion with the um, purple mane. And, and it, it's because it's reflecting the sunset. And of course, it and that really golden light, which is coming down. And he said, so why exactly did you do the main purple? And I thought, oh, you're a little bit closed off to this conversation. Fine. So I then just said, because I've been very lucky to have happened to have been to Kenya and I've seen a lion and, and they ref and he went, oh, because he needed some realistic. He needed me to hit him. I couldn't say because intuitively I felt because no. I know it was, <laughs> just, it was gonna be out of there. <laughs> Again, we're back, we're back to we're back to what Cindy said. It's the way you yeah. explain it to yeah, yeah. A yeah. non-believer, as it and as such, that well, it's not, they're not non-believers. They're just not awake. No, no, not awake. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it, it's explaining them at the level they're at at that point in time. That's yeah, it's like it. any subject, maths, whatever. Yeah. You explain maths to to a child that's, that's not really into maths. You explain it in a certain way, they get it. You explain yeah. the spiritual realm to people that never really open themselves to it. All of a sudden, they get it. And I tell you, once you start getting it, there's no going back. Oh, absolutely. It does have a huge positive effect in your life. But it also, I think art itself as well, because I mean, obviously, intuition and everything, but I know there's an awful lot of said about art and mental health and, and, and that side of it. But I think because the two things go so well together with your spirit and creating, and I think that's why it has such positive on people's mental health, because, that you know, when you're healing from a... Um, Perhaps something, you know, it could be anything that's happened to so many things. I know we mental health covers are huge and I, I'm probably not allowed to call it mental health anymore. It's probably called something entirely different, but oh, it does. And I'm just at the moment reviewing a book about a lady um, who do, who's doing weaving and she's showing how you can weave with a stone and things like that and how everything is um accessible to everybody you know you don't have to have a big loom to do weaving it's like needle felting you can just have a bit of fluff and a needle you can make something really really small and with all of our art you only have to have a little um something and 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 just enough of encouragement to go for it and that's why i i very much i think we all very much are, are actually trying to um spread that kind of feeling aren't we and not, we don't even have to give instruction, but just by being on Facebook and actually talking about it and this, actually saying to people, come talk to us about this stuff. Even if you think, I don't even know what you're talking about. Come and talk to us. <laughs> before, before I forget, I need to pick up on something that Sammy said earlier on about how her art has changed since she got involved with the Blooms and the confidence that's given her. Because there are, who, who who's missing? There's two of us, so there's eight of us all together. And the support that you get mm. within the group, and it is, you know, we used to say, well, I'll, I'll pray for you. But now you say, right, I'm going to send you positive vibes for yeah. a show you're doing or for a new piece you're doing or for a house sale. Yeah. All that, all that. And I'm 100% sure that the positive energy from all of us makes a hell of a difference. The power of the blooms. The power, the of, the power of the blooms. <laughs> It's right because all of us feel that. Matthew, you going to say something? Yes, I was going to say that, that although we might actually write something down, although we might say it, it's the feeling, it's something other than the words because you can say a word with no no feeling in it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And the nice thing is you... what it conveys and it just says. Can I just say that one of the Blooms members is actually a Dalmatian? Because Steph was talking to her guardian angel and then realised that was her, her actual self that she was talking to. But when I was little, 
I used to do a lot of talking to and throwing sticks for my Dalmatian. Oh. So nobody else could see. Did you so have a Dalmatian? That was me. I'm a there Dalmatian. There you go. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that that says that says to me that you are very much in tune, but you yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Me too, Mac. Just yeah, I'm not being funny now, Fiona. But have you ever done a portrait of a Dalmatian? Yes. Did you find there was something about doing that portrait that made you feel different? Did you think about yes, your... frustrated, so many flipping spots to do? Well, because it was a particular <laughs> Dalmatian and not necessarily your Dalmatian. No, but I was no, just thinking was... maybe it just. Yeah. This is a subject yeah. that we could talk about forever. And it, <laughs> yeah. It's just a yep. great, and it's so nice that we can talk about it without yeah. people thinking, oh, God, those odd lot of people. That, it's woo-hoo live there. It's, <laughs> but the thing, so, is, it's the thing so, is, do we do we care if they think we're wrong? No, we don't. We're but the nice thing we, is, we are supportive, we're encouraging, we're friendly, we're open. Yeah. Do we care if people think we're odd? No. no, well, we're not odd because nowadays people, I think, are accepting of the different ways uh, mm. that people approach life. They're accepting that there is more than we, than some people, not we, but that some people will accept. And once you open yourself up to that, which I've done um, over the last two, three years, it has a wonderful effect on your life, even if you don't know why it's doing it. Mm. I urge anybody watching this to get into a group of people, like-minded people, and be a bit more open to um, these ideas that you, there is more um, and find out, I mean, I'm not in a position to, to explain, Mac and Cindy can certainly, and I'll put their contact details um, for their various feeds on the bottom of this comment for, on YouTube. So you can contact them if you want to find out more, because they're the ones that will be able to guide you metaphorically and physically guide you to where you want to be and I think but just let yourself, let yourself be open to to what's around you and um, once you get into that other dimension it's fun it's great <laughs> and enjoy it it's not something mystical and magic it's, it's magical but not in a way that anybody's going to sort of think it's it's odd it's not a secret it's not like a secret it's not a secret <laughs> it used to be the secret but it's no longer a secret yeah, it used to be very much um, yeah. for very secluded. Yeah, uh, no, it's over. Now it's no, it's <laughs> all these um, um, beautiful, wonderful things that have been spread. Being around you wonderful ladies, it, it certainly made um, my life a lot richer and a lot more um, open to everything and uh, stress-free, really. So, <laughs> so thank you very much. I think we just wind it up there. We've been going on for about an hour now almost, which is which is brilliant. So lots more we could talk about. Uh, there'll be another Blooms Babylon Beyond coming up very soon. So watch out for it. Do get in touch with any of us if you want to find out more about our art or about the spiritual realm. And we'll see you all again very soon. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.